and welcome back to the studio and we're going to paint away the stress of everyday life here in Wales and today I'm going to be painting on a 10 by 8 canvas it's had a, a burnt umber gesso on there um, which is a bit of a ground and then we're going to move straight on to the palette as you can see we've got a couple of different colours there today So, yes, yeah, so we've got some Prussian blue and some vermilion. That's a couple of colours I don't I'll use a lot of. Um, but before further ado, let's get straight on to this painting. Um, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white. There we go. A little bit of white and a little bit of that cerulean blue. There we go. White and cerulean blue, as you've seen me do so many times in the past. And I'm just going to paint that straight in. Now, I put a little sketch um, onto the the board just to as a guide for me just to know where this mountain is going to be um, we're painting on a mountain today and I had a question um, off one of the subscribers is what color how do I decide what color ground to use and um, I replied that it depends on whether I want a, a warm tone or a cool tone to the, the canvas as you can see if I over brush this a little bit there you can see a little bit of that canvas coming through and that's the type of effect that I like to have I quite like that effect there um, it's not for everybody's taste but it all depends on what type of style you've got to paint and um, I quite like painting on small canvases and then that's another reason I was asked another question I was asked another reason another question I was asked was why do you paint on small canvases? Well, the reason I do that is because a lot of artists picking up a little bit of Prussian blue now with a little bit of white, just to darken this sky down. Because I want it quite, I want it quite dark here because I want it to look as if it's a, maybe a, an impending storm or something coming through there. And the reason I, I paint on small canvases like this because a lot of artists use small canvases and they do little studies and these little studies then will allow them to move on to a larger canvas so I could paint this and scale it up if I wanted to onto a larger canvas and the reason I teach um, my students to paint on a smaller canvas to start with because it limits the amount of problems you've got and it also brings in um, the problems that you have got so Maybe you're struggling a little bit on blending. Maybe you're struggling a little bit on brush strokes and things like that. And it all comes to light when you're, when you're working on a small canvas like this. And if you can correct those problems that you're having on a canvas this size, it's easier when you grow up. When you grow up. When you grow up. <laughs> when the canvas grows up. <laughs> when it becomes a big canvas. <laughs> when it becomes a teenage canvas. But you know what I mean. So I always like painting on small canvases and when I'm planning a painting that's exactly what I do I always paint on a small canvas and see how it looks see the composition um, you could do it on a computer if you wanted to but I like to get the feel of the brush strokes and the paint and I like to know um, what possibilities there are when I actually come to do the main one so again picking up a bit of white and again putting that onto the canvas and just just fluffing up. Um, I've had another question saying I struggle with clouds. Well, I've always said don't paint clouds, just paint shapes. A little bit of Prussian blue just to get a little bit of shadow in the bottom of this cloud. There you go. And just bend that, bend it, bend, bend, blend it. Bend it, shake it just a little bit. Blend that in there like that. Using the brush like that, holding the brush between the two fingers, and then this is what I do. You might find a different way, and I and I and I scrub that brush into the canvas like that. You work whichever way works for you, works for you. Remember, whichever way works for you, works for you. My methods won't always suit other people, um, but I know that underliningly um, these methods work, so give them a try. And then you can 
change them if you want to. There we are. Just a couple of little flicking marks like that will give you a nice cloud base. So I'm picking up a little bit of Prussian blue. I'm picking up a little bit of Mars black. I'm going to darken that. I'm going to turn that into a grey. I'm going to add a bit of white to the corner of that. You can see it's a lovely grey. It's a lovely grey. Especially for a dark sky. Like this. Let's just put some flick some marks in. Like this. Because don't forget this is a storm and it's building. Do a bit of darker colour down here now. Darken the base of those up. Scrubbing it in. Scrubbing it in like that. And look after your brushes. Clean them well. Clean them well. Picking up a little bit of white. I'm going to have to put some oil on my seat, I think, because it's creaking terrible lately. Getting like me. Getting old. And I had another um, question the other day saying... Um, can you please try and change your accent and the speed you're talking because I can't quite understand you. Well, for that person, I shall talk like this. How is that? I will talk a little bit quieter and a little bit more in keeping with the Queen's English. There you go. So, just lightly place on the clouds like that with the edge of your brush and just give that essence of a storm effect just approaching that mountain. I hope that's okay. <laughs> I do love these trolls that come and annoy us and all us YouTubers are plagued by these people. They've got nothing else better to do than actually just give us thumbs down and be nasty to us. And if there's any YouTubers out there listening um, that have just started up, don't get put off by these people. Just, just laugh at them and feel sorry for them because they've got nothing else better to do in their lives. And they go along YouTube and just upsetting people, even even the new people, um, or should I say the more established um, YouTubers, can get upset sometimes by what they can say. But don't let these bullies bully you. That's all they want is a reaction. There you go. And the only reason I'm reacting to it today is because I'm fed up of them saying nasty things. There you go. <laughs> I don't worry about it. I paint away the stress of everyday life here in Wales and that's all it's about. Just enjoying your painting because this is your world and you can be and you can paint and you can say anything you want. Really? Well then keep it. As long as it's not offending and it's an accent that you can understand. <laughs> There we go. I think I'll, I think that's enough of a sky for the moment. I'm just going to rinse my brush out like that. There we go. So um, I'm looking at this mountain. Um, I'm going to I'm going to put some. I got some um, um, Van Dyke brown there. There we are. Some Van Dyke brown. If I go Van Dyke brown, mix some burnt umber and some black together, and I'll give you enough of a colour. There you go. I'm just going to mix black to that anyway. So. But I've got some Van Dyke Brown. I quite like Van Dyke Brown. Um, it's a bit more opaque than the Burnt Umber. But there you go. So let's put our... I'm going to paint this in today. You can use this, You can use a palette knife. If you're going to do this as a, as, as a bigger painting, then you can use a palette knife. But for this effect, I'm just going to use a brush today. There you go. I'm painting in the way you think this mountain is going to fall. There we are. There's a bit of a walkway there. There we are. I say walkway. It's like a, it's like a sheer cliff there, I think. We'll put some snow on this mountain later on, I think. I think that would be good. There you go. And what you can do, you can get a little bit of white, just to, just to the corner of that, just to change that colour up. There we are. And this will give our highlights on the mountain as well. So we can bring some highlights in to our mountain like that. And this lends itself really well to um, a bigger canvas. So practice these things. 
and practice with a palette knife. And that's what I suggest you do because I think it's it's a wonderful thing to do. And as I said um, previously, that this is what I do. I paint these small canvases and and I take them then to onto a bigger canvas. But what happens with these small canvases? Well. In the case of this particular instance, um, I paint over them because these are just lessons. And I, I painted this this scene before. This mountain was actually taken, a part of this mountain was actually done with a palette knife. And I did it with a, a, a challenge I did with Jason. So please check the eye cards out by there. And that's when he asked me to paint the mountain. So I, I painted this particular mountain for him, with just the top part. Because I painted this a, a couple of times. And... It, this painting actually sells well. It does. I've I've sold um, small paintings like this quite well on a craft fair. So try that. Try that. If that's your, if money it, money making is your thing, and you you want to you want to try out and see if people will buy your artwork, then paint small canvases like this and and just sell them for a few dollars, and you'd be surprised. People would rather pick up a smaller bit of artwork than a large bit of artwork. That's that's my experience. That's my experience. There you go. Just bringing that colour down like that. There you go. And then just put a few lines like that just to represent that sheer cliff there. Come back into the dark colour now. And let's put another little pointy thing there like that. There we go. Let's just darken that up a touch more. A bit more black. A bit more burnt umber. Um, Bandite brown, sorry. And then just bring that down. Get a line roughly there, like that. Get a bit of this light colour now. And just a bit more. In there like that. There you go. A little bit of snow hanging about. Maybe. Who knows? Don't have to be snow. You can put whatever you want there. It's your world, don't forget. As my old mentor Bob Ross used to say, it's your world. You can move mountains. You can move mountains. And I've done and I've studied a lot with Mr. Bob Ross over the years. I really have. And it's encouraged me to move on to this type of thing. And, and a lot of his techniques work well within acrylics. And that's a fact. So I'm just going to get a little bit of paint, white paint, just on the brush like that. You see the way I'm rolling our brush. And hopefully this will work. So I'm just going to use a brush between those two fingers again, like that. And I'm just going to lightly, 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 lightly just drag. Like that. It's a dry brush technique, very similar to what you can do with a palette knife. But in this instance... You just let in the paint come off the brush like that. And you can put the paint on a little bit thicker now. Just to like as if it's just catching there. There you go. Not a lot of pressure. The same with the palette knife. Really, you mustn't put a lot of pressure on this because you can spoil it easily. There you go. Gone over a little bit there, so let's just get a little bit of this burned umber and black. And let's just correct that. Blending this in a lightly, 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 just to get a little bit of colour there, like that. 
there you are a very very simple very very simple mountain with a little bit of snow just hanging on the bottom there now what we need to do um, as we do a lot with acrylics is we need to dry that layer off now and um, so we can put another layer in front without moving that paint because if that paint is touch dry but it doesn't mean it's dry dry so we can dry it enough to take another layer with this without it lifting now what I'm going to do is pick up a one inch short flat pick up a bit of Prussian blue just going to paint across there like that a bit more and then get some cerulean blue bit of Prussian blue in this corner now nice and dark like that bit of cerulean blue bit of white I just wipe the brush I just wipe the brush in some kitchen roll and get some white and I'm, all I'm going to do now is bring some white straight down like this a bit more white straight down like that and then very very lightly Just going to pull across like that. Get a bit more. There we go. Nice job. Now we're going to dry that bit as well now. Okay, picking up an half inch short flat, I'm just going to moisten down a part of my palette. There you go. I'm picking up some yellow, and I'm picking up a small amount of black. And you can see that's going to turn that into a green. I don't want it too dark. There we are. And now I'm just going to just tap the brush. Like that. Making, don't make them all the same length like that. Make them some of them slightly taller than others. There you go. Just a tap. Just tapping that brush just to make little tree shapes look. That's all you want. Take that all the way along. There you go. Get some yellow. Same thing. Get some yellow. Get a little roll of paint just on the tip of that brush there, like that. See? And now, just here and there, and there and here, just a little bit of yellow. Not a lot. Very lightly pressured. Just a touch of yellow there 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 like that that's good now let's wash that brush a little bit wash the brush okay so we've washed the brush now I want to get a little bit more black to this 
a bit of green I want a darker green a bit of, a bit of green a bit of yellow into that black so make this a nice dark green now it's got a little bit more thickness to it a little bit of roller paint a little roller paint a little roller paint and now I'm just gonna bring in a little bit of land mass there like that there you go a bit more black 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 let's put some shadows in these trees now whoops too much paint on the brush again very lightly very 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 lightly like that Put some shadow there like that. Get this brush now on very lightly. Put a little of a little bit of shadow there, like as if it's some sort of bank maybe. Now we can get this. paint this black paint and bring this out like that and come down there this is as yellow and black nice dark green it's a dark green it is fill that up then like that Nice, 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 nice. We can bring this one out now. There. Same thing. Blocking it out. Blocking it out. There we go. brush off like that. Ooh, it's starting to look like something now. We started to frame that paint in, I think. Get some yellow. And let's just put some bits of pieces here like this. Just tap in the brush just using a short flat it's, it's nothing major you don't have to have a special brush for this just put some highlight there like that just to make it look as if it's a bit of green and we can do a little bit of that as well over here so just get a little bit of that lighter color and just just let the brush do its thing make it make all these tiny little shapes look see like that it's an adaption of Bob Ross isn't it yeah so you can you can do this quite easily with acrylics and people say oh I can't paint like Bob Ross with acrylic yes you can yes you can this is a quick painting and um, with the the blending mediums and things that I've got um, which I adapted specifically for this um, which are available on the website www.cly5art.co.uk the blending white and the liquid clear and on all that type of stuff then you can you can do a little bit more. You'll have a little bit more flexibility when you're doing something like this then. There you go. Just bring in, bring in a little bit of highlight now. Just you are there and everywhere like that. There. Okay. Now we can do a bit more on this side, can't we? Let's just bring a little bit more highlight there in you a short flat just a short flat just pushing up like this short flat that's all it is nothing special don't need a special brush or nothing like that i just put a little bit of burnt number with that black just to brown it off a bit and i'm just gonna mix up some more because we got a tree here in, in the old bob ross style uh it's in the old bob ross style he used to do trees didn't he so let's put a let's put a tree in There he is. 
Can you see him? I can see him. I'm just using the edge of this brush now. I don't know. Shall we? Let's try it. See if we can do this. I've never done this with a filbert brush before, so this is new for me. So let's just, just get the very edge of that brush. We'll try and get that shape of a fir tree. There, like this. And I've never used a short flat doing this before because I've always used I've always used a fan brush and I've actually got one ready look I've actually got a fan brush ready for this but I thought well not everybody got a fan brush so let's see if we can't a little bit more black I'm going to darken this up now because as it goes down it gets darker and darker and darker and darker not everybody got fan brushes so it's a bit stupid trying to show you how to do something with a fan brush if you haven't got a fan brush so I'm just saying you can do this now Quite nicely, and all that down there like that. I put a bit of shadow in there now. Just put a shadow in there like that. There we go. How's that? That looks good. That looks good. I like that. I do. Now, when we do in trees, it's always better to have an odd number than an even number. Um, so I thought, let's let's do something. Let's do something radical. Let's put an even number of trees in this time. Let's put another a tree in there like that. And just just get. that in there again like that different type of tree have this one on an angle have this one on an angle again try and get that if you use if you're struggling use a smaller filbert brush or a smaller a short flat there you go that's just on the wong that one let's put another one there it's a baby one there growing up it's mum and dad this is the baby there you go looking good I like that yes hmm okay so let's get some yellow and let's let's make a nice olivey green you notice I always wipe my brush like that I don't wash this brush if I'm going to be using different tones of green I'll just wipe the old paint off the brush like that and then I can go straight in it just allows me to use the paint without over thinning it because every time you wash your brush the brush holds water that's going to thin your paint so if you're using all just greens like I'm using here then just wipe the brush off and that maintains that the, the tackiness in the brush there's a tackiness in the brush of the paint also holds the paint in place there you go tip and just very very lightly now very very lightly just on that edge pick up a little bit of light like that there you go let's put a little bit of light on that tree there like that a little bit of light just catching that tree light is coming this way up it is now I like this coming this way. <laughs> oh, it's not it. You yeah, don't snort a camera, Clive. It's not nice. I mean, you'll have a complaint saying they can't understand what you're saying. <laughs> okay, a bit more. A bit more colour like that. There we go. There we are. Let's put a nice... Let's, let's put a bush or something here, shall we? Let's put a bush in. Like that. Same brush. I'm changing my brush. No, oh, I'm changing my brush at all, look. Okay, let's get a bit of this dark green and then just pull down a little bit of green into that water like that. There you go, a little bit of green in that water just to make it look as if it's some sort of shadow or something like that. Right, I want this to be, just picking up a bit of blue now, I want this to be a bit darker up here. So, oops. Don't pick up white life, it won't work. Pick up it. Just put in a little bit of the Prussian blue in that water there like that. Just to darken that edge off. There you are. I just didn't like that water the way it was. I'm picking up a little bit of moisture off my on my onto my brush now, so it enabled to me to 
just pull that across a little bit like that. And a bit of still got green on my brush, so it gives you that little tinge of green as well. There we go. Um, now what I want to do is just put that in the water. I'm going to pick up um, a script lining brush. That's one of those long, pointy bristle brushes. There you go. And I'm just going to go into some off white with this and clean that brush very well and I'm just going to go very very lightly now very very lightly across the bottom right now I'm also going to put a few why my brush isn't so clean let me just see if I can rescue that brush because okay I just picked up another brush I just dipped it in some water because this line is a bit thick so I'm just gonna basically just paint that in like that that's better so it's just a wet brush all I'm doing is just moving that paint about that I've already put on because my f my script lining brush wasn't as clean as I thought it was. So just move our paint about a bit. There you go. It's not looking so in your face as they say. Yes, they do. They say that. A bit of a watermark then under there. Because that's following the bank. There you go. Again, just get some moisture on our brush. There we are. Get that moisture on our brush. And then just pull that out. Like that. Move our paint about a bit. There we go. Make it look as if there's a little bit of movement in that water. Maybe there's some trout or some fish or something moving on in there like that. And we can get a few of these little lines now. Like this. Just dance across our water like that. Again, wash the brush. Just pick up a bit of moisture. Clean brush. Moisture on the brush. And let's just move that paint about. Like that. bit more moisture on the brush move that paint about there you go what a lovely little scene that is there must be some rocks under the water there making that water move like that and that's what you tell people because this is your painting and it can be any way or any thing you want it to be as I said this is your world this is your world it is Okay, I'm going to put that brush in to soak a minute. I got a little tiny filbert brush. You can use a um, um, short flat or you can use anything you want. I'm going to pick up some of this brown greeny colour. And now I'm just going to put a little line in like this. Making it a bit bigger as I come down. Like that. And then pick, pick a black, a bit of black on this back side up some black just on the back side of this old trunky trunk yes he's a trunky trunk this one is there you are just a little bit of black there same little detail brush that we put the water in with I'm just going to mix, mix a little bit of white to that greeny browny grey colour that we decided to use for these trees Let's just put a little bit of highlight on this tree like that. Make these noises. My dear friend Bob Ross used to say, or my mentor I should say, used to say make them noises because they do help you. And you it helps to talk to yourself as well. I talk to myself. This, this is why I like making videos because I always talk to myself. And my wife says, what are you doing in the studio for life talking to yourself? I said, making a video love. And I'm not. <laughs> and I'm not. No line like that 
There's another one there. Another little one there. Uh, he's dead. This one is so dead. You might have a little bit of. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a couple of little twinks like that, and they've always got these little things sticking down there like that. And let's 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 be nice to this little tree. I think I think today. I think today he's got a little bit of green left on him. So he's not he's not quite dead. I don't think. It's a lovely little tree. He's been there for years and years and years and. And I don't know why, but he's uh, he's had his best days. I think he's ready for retirement, like me. I think. Yes, there we go. And if you like pinked in along with me in the studio every Monday, I must add, every Monday I'm in the studio, and I'm painting away the stress of everyday life here in Wales. Mm -hmm. Let's put a little bit of great leaves there, maybe. Painting a life away the stress of life every day here in Wales. And if you like that, then please press the subscription button or leave a comment even. And because uh, I love all these comments, I really do. I really do like all these comments. Okay, so we got some vermilion here. Um, this is a uh, we haven't used the vermilion yet, and I don't know why, but I didn't. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of white with that vermilion and make a lovely pink color. And I think today we're going to put some pink flowers in there, like that, and a couple of pink flowers then. There, like that. I'm just going straight into some vermilion now. and get some dots of pure vermilion just on the tip of my brush, and just put in some, just put in some little flowers like that. And then we can pick our script liner up again. If I can find it, where did I put my script liner? There we. Are, I found it. Pick up some yellow. And let's just put some grass here and there like this, just to build up the foreground a touch. There we are. Little bits of grass here and there, just. And you will play with this, and you have fun with this. That little bit of red by there will sell this painting. Trust me, I know I've sold this one so many times, it's unbelievable. And I've painted it a couple of times now. And um, they always sell. Every time I do one of these, it'll, it'll sell. And as I said, if that's your thing, then that's good. A little bit of yellow here and there like this. So thank you very much for joining me in the studio today. And God bless. And um, thank you for painting away the stress of everyday life with me in Wales. Please press the subscribe button. And I will see you on another video it's every Monday. Thank you very much. Fly. My name is Clive and Clive's Art. Bye. Grab your brush, have a great time And don't forget to click subscribe